I had a, a weird month also because I had other shit going on under the background. Beside the accusations of doing everything else, a situation happened to me years ago. I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast, but I really wanted to give it light about the girl who checked me at my show in New York. Did I talk about that on the podcast? Briefly, yeah. You said that uh, you mentioned someone that maybe you shouldn't have mentioned. Yeah, and then that she'd passed away. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was weird because I told you guys. So the girl came to my show, and, and then after the show, she took my number randomly, and she says, I'll be in touch with you when I come to California. And uh, it's just, this is going to be weird. She called me and said that, you know, who the fuck was I to parade into New York and New Jersey to do comedy with at least coming into and apologizing to some of the people I needed to apologize to. She, she goes, you don't need to apologize to everybody. Some of them were scumbags on their own, but you do need to apologize to these couple people. And it was like six people. And I fucking apologized to three of them like a man. I contacted them, and I felt that the other three people, it's like when you go to AA. I think one of the steps is, I think step number four is making amends to everybody that you've hurt, you know. And I'll tell you, anybody I talk to from that program, I always ask them, did you make amends with everybody? And they'll go, close to everybody. You know why? Because there's some people that will never get it. There's some people that you went. I have an aunt in Miami. Uh, years ago, I went and went down there to pick up some stuff. I think in 2014. And I thought about visiting that aunt. She's in an old lady's home. And I made a few calls. And when I called the son to see where she was at, he goes, why? Are you thinking of going over there? And I was like, I don't know. Maybe I'll send some flowers or something. And he goes, I don't know how that's going to work out. And even though I was going to go over there, sometimes, guys, you got to let dead dogs lie. Because there's some people that you're going to go and apologize to, and it's just a reason for them to go on into a different war with you. The three people that did accept my apology accepted it just how I thought they were. And since I told you the story, one of them has reached out to me during this whole thing. And we've spoken about three times. And nothing has come up. He was happy that I was back in his life. So, you know, sometimes you don't have to apologize to everybody. I don't ever want you to think that because these three people that she expects me to apologize to, I really want to apologize to them, but there was so much history in the air that we're going to have to address one of those things, and that's where this thing is going to go south. You can't make every situation golden, you know? You just can't do it. Even this situation, like I told you, this, this quarantine, what's gone on the last fucking six weeks, you know? Some people have gotten good things out of this, the underlying stuff, you know? I got to spend time with my family. I got to see Mercy's weaknesses. I, you know, I, me and my wife work it out perfectly where I go in, she goes out. She goes in, I go out. We're never really that much together so we don't get sick of each other. But all in all, I love my wife. and all. This, but that's not the point. The point is I just didn't feel I should apologize. And one of the guys I made apologies to, that he deserved my apology, you know. He called back. He never called me back after I apologized to him. But then he called me back one day to apologize to me. And he said, you know, I after you apologized to me, I was still mad at you. But it took my father dying and for me to experience the pain to understand what you were going through and why you did that to me at that age. We're good. He goes, now I understood where your motivation came from. You had lo just lost your mother and you couldn't focus. So that's even happened. So he lives in Sarasota, Florida, and him and I are tight now. Like, we talk every two or three fucking days. 
do you think there's not like a possibility like one of those people who you don't think you should apologize to something could happen in the in the upcoming years and maybe you guys will talk like it's not it's not set in stone well one of the people that i was supposed to apologize passed okay at the time they were a little older and i sent flowers and on the card i put you know i always love you and their grandmother came out and their granddaughter she reached out and thanked me for the kind flowers and the note blah 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 blah, blah you know but i mean there was still two people on that list that they and you know what i see them on facebook all the time and they see me on facebook and they don't say much and i don't say much the guy has made one remark in the last 10 years you guys take stuff seriously in North Bergen. Like a sarcastic <laughs> remark. Oh, okay. In 10 years. He made a sarcastic remark. And I could have unloaded on him, but I'm older now. And I said, what's the what's the use? He's always going to be the same person. That's why I don't want to apologize to him. Right. Because he has 19 different beefs with me. The beef I thought he had with me, when I did talk to him one time, there was a complete different beef. Oh, Jesus. He was mad because he said when I did interviews, I never mentioned his name. I mentioned his brother's name. So did you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Like when I did interviews for the local papers, right. he got mad at me because I didn't mention his name. I mentioned his brother's name. Oh, that's kind of because I always, knew I, well, with... I always knew I was at war with him, you know, really and not really. And, and when I say war, I mean, there's no war. We haven't spoken in 30 years. Right, but even if you have... How many people are you supposed to mention? That's kind of crazy. It's It doesn't matter. I mean, people are going to be people. <laughs> I'm just talking about when it comes to apologies, how they right. work out and how they pan themselves out. And you know what? You, you you fuck with some people and some people don't want an apology. Like They're like, listen, I'm moving on, you know? I have a couple friends that have moved on from me. Am I ashamed to say that? No, not at all. One day they look at they took a look at the whole picture, and I in fact there's one guy that told me to my fucking face when I called him. And guess what? That call also was about seventeen years ago. His brother come, called me about a month ago. Me and his brother have always been great friends. We're friends since we were kids. My friend just went into a tailspin, and. He thought I was responsible for one of the problems he had growing up. Well, you're allowed to do that, though. You're allowed to say, listen, I don't want you in my life. Like, that, that's a reasonable thing you can say to someone. When he told I wish me, I was strong enough to say that to When he people. told me, I was not mad. I was not angry. And I understood. I did not tell him to go fuck himself. He wished me good luck. I wished him good luck. And I got it. Yeah. So I got it. It was too much. It was too much. The, the, the years of our friendship were just too much. It was... It was an, it was a it was it was a, a five year run that it was everything every element it had it was like what's that movie with Adam Sandler? Which one? Well, the one he gets shot in the fucking head, uncut gems. Right. That's what it was. <laughs> Me and him were uncut gem types of guy. So every day, I still remember driving with him ah. once a week to a doctor to get fake fake muscle relaxes for his fake back injury when we were in kids. <laughs> You actually have to go to the doctor to get fake pills? They would give him muscle relaxers. Oh, okay. He would go to the doctor. The doctor would touch his back, and he'd go, Doc, it feels like eight more weeks. So he got a job at a big fucking plant when he was a kid. Right. And every summer, he would hurt himself to have the summer off, and he would be paid. So he, he would get 1800 a month from unemployment or, or disability, whatever, and he would live his life like a doctor. And then, like, October, football season, his back would be back to normal. He did this every year for years. I love it. For years. He had a bad back. So the one year I hung out with him when he really ran the scam, the one summer, we went out to get pills once a week. We used to go to, I forget the name of the town. It's next to Carney, New Jersey. They had a great Chinese restaurant there with an all-you-could-eat Monday nights, and they served shrimp and lobster sauce. We used to go in there and take all the shrimp and lobster sauce. The Chinese guy would lose his fucking mind. <laughs> We would take all the fucking shrimp. It was like, not Leonia. It was a different town. If I asked Timmy Holloway, he remembered because he's the one that gave me the restaurant. 
But yeah, I, I, listen, man, people change for different. I have two dear friends that will not talk to me. I have one guy that me and him say something to ourselves on Facebook. He's not, I apologized to him years ago. I apologized to him years ago. He's just still kept me at arm's distance because of his own self insecurities. He's got problems and he don't want me to know about them. So how do you, and I guess it's different for every person, obviously, but you're talking about making the decision to apologize to some people and not to others. Well, like, how do you make that decision? Like, what, like, what, what makes you choose a person to apologize to? I had to think about what happened. And I got to tell you something. During the fucking quarantine, I thought about a couple things a couple nights. And I'm surprised a lot more people still talk to me. <laughs> like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, a couple nights I beat myself up heavy duty during this quarantine. Just because I thought of things late night that I had forgotten about. You know, I always say that you got to check on your skeletons in the closet from time to time. If not, they're going to check on you. I guess so, Jesus. So I had a fucking, you know, I had a little nervous break. And, and guys, when I tell you that I did things, you know, when I was uh, 12, I dated a girl and. We broke up, and one day she fell off a bike. She fell off my bike. I've told this story. I started feeling guilt about that because in her mind today, she thinks I did it on purpose. If you know anything about me, I would never do anything like that. That's not my That's not my build. I don't, if I want to do something, I'll do it to your face, you know? Right. Um, there were little things at night that I just tripped on. You know, when I was 18, I had a kid in the head with a Heineken bottle. He was a lot older than I was, and he had an axe handle. He was going to hit a friend of mine. What did you want me to do? But I felt bad how the whole thing went down. That's why I'm really hoping that out of my friends that call, Louis Castellito calls, because his mother was the court clerk when that went down. So I hit him in the head on a Sunday night, and I we ran away. There was two right. guys in the car, and we ran away. But I guess the pizza guy, Sal must have ID'd us. And they came the next day and didn't arrest me. They gave me a summons. Nice. To go to court for uh, assault. It's free for smoking days, cocksucker. It's Wednesday. Spark them if you got them. You know what I'm saying? Like the motto says, if you ain't high by lunchtime, go stab your mother in the neck and pull out the Andromeda tubes. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm drama that is. I'm just dropping words here out of respect. Anyway, what were we talking about? About um, 